Greetings ladies and gentlemen, hope you are well. This is biology. In this presentation, we want to look at this question. It is coming from 2019, General Certificate of Education, GCE, Paper 2, Section A, and it was question number 2A. The question, figure shows parts of a rhizopus. So what you're seeing here is a rhizopus. Questions are on the other side. We have A, identify the parts labeled C and D. So we have C here, what is this called? We also have D here. B says state the function of the part labeled E. You've seen E here? What is its function? Now to understand these questions fully, you need to know the meaning of rhizopus. Let me give you a little bit of information concerning rhizopus. The common name of this term here, a word rhizopus, is bread mud. When you see it written bread mud in papers, don't get confused. They are talking about rhizopus. So they can say figure shows parts of a bread mud. It's a rhizopus that they are talking about. Okay? When you get some slices of bread, okay, put them at one point or place for some days. Let's say five days, ten days. You will be able to see some changes, right? There will be certain new living organisms that will develop there. That is the rise of us that we are talking about here, that we want to discuss. Let's now define it. What is a rise of us? It is a living organism. What you are seeing here is a living organism whose body, the body here, is made up of branched, you can see the branches, right? It is made up, made up of branched thread-like filament which are called hyphen. They are called what? Hyphen. Singular, you end here, hyphen. So the branches that you are seeing here, the filaments that you are seeing here, are hyphen. Of course, they've got different names, and we are going to label them one after the other. Now, we are saying this rhizopus is a living organism. What type of living organism? It is a saprophyte. It is a saprophyte. What is a saprophyte? A saprophyte is a living organism which obtain food from where? From dead and decaying matter. That is a saprophyte. So what you are seeing here, a rhizopus, obtain food from dead and decaying matter. When it comes to the type of nutrition, this is under what is called saprophytic nutrition. Now, if you can recall, we have two types of nutrition, two major types of nutrition. We have autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. Where we say autotrophic, a good example that we can cite are plants because they are able to make their own food. Remember, auto means self. Under heterotrophic nutrition, that is where we have saprophytic nutrition. And a good example now under that are uh, rhizopus. When it comes to kingdom, or the class where they belong. They belong to a class 
coat fungi so they are in the same group with mushroom the one we consume eh? they are in the same category same group so that's the kingdom the fungi these are not plants at the same time they are not animals okay they are not plants they've got no chlorophyll they don't have I hope you are following with uh, that uh, presentation. Now, this rhizopus has got T parts that we need to label. The body of a rhizopus is called mycelia. Okay? So the body of a rhizopus here is mycelia singular you can say mycelium okay now let's look at the parts of this rhizopus and probably with its function we can start with uh, these uh, pores that you are seeing inside what we call them sometimes you can even find them outside like this what are those called? These are called spore. So the one inside. And you have to be very careful. Look at the way I'm doing the, the location there. I'm talking about these that are inside. Or here, if it is outside, I'm talking about these. Those are called spore. Okay. Then the ring, this ring that you're seeing here is now called sporangium sporangium the ring is the sporangium what is holding this sporangium what is holding this now eh? that is now called Sporangiopore. Sporangiopore. It is called sporangiopore. So please, uh, what is important here is to know the correct spellings. Of course, pronunciation may differ, but uh, you have to write the correct spelling. That is what defines biology. Okay? So we have sporangium, which is this, and sporangiopore, which is the one that is holding that. We have vertical hyper or hyper. The vertical ones, I mean the vertical ones are these. Then we also have the horizontal ones. What do we call them? The horizontal ones, like this one here. Okay? So the horizontal one, this can be called stolon. Okay? That is the stolon. Let's also label E. These now that goes down here like roots. We call these as um, rhizoid. Okay, they are called rhizoid. So these are some of the major parts. Of course, uh, they are not the only ones, but uh, these are the major parts of a rhizopus. Well, we can now look at uh, the questions. Identify the parts labeled C and D. C, we have already talked about that. C is in the sporangium. The sporangium, like that. Then when it comes to D, D here, we have that one, which is in the sporangium pole. Like that. B. State the function of the part labeled E, which is the rhizoid here. What is the function of that? This, like I said, they are like roots, right? They absorb nutrients from food material. So you can simply say absorb, absorb nutrients nutrients from food materials from food materials 
this is the way the question was supposed to be answered. Thank you very much for watching.